Morning folks, it's Monday, a bit dank and damp, isn't it birds are on, that's unusual, there we go, but inside the workshop it's nice and warm, I haven't got the heating on, it's just, uh, it just stays warm in here, it really does, uh, that's why I don't need much heating really. These, uh, these two black doors pick up the heat from the sun, when there is some sun, and radiate it back into the workshop and just keep it warm all the time. Right, what are we on with? We've done that one. And now we're going to do this one. Right, which is marked and punched and is going to be drilled. I'm going to... I've put a flat washer on the back of there. I might just take that off and put a big square washer on because I've got some big square plate washers just to stop it crushing the box section although I don't think it will. I mean this is fairly thin walled box section but I think it should be okay. Let's get this hole. Ooh, we're a bit low there. Yeah we're a bit, we're almost into that. In fact I bet we are. I bet we are. I might just go a bit higher. I might just remark that a bit higher. Off we go. Well folks, I think we've advanced several tech levels. First of all, the motor's actually running there, you can probably hear it, but it's not quiet. Secondly, I've got a piece of spring steel banding and I've put it round the pulley. Not tight, just so that it stops the belt from coming out when it slows down and it's also acting as a brake. And that seems to be pretty good, that seems to stop pretty quick. And yet when, it's, when the belt is pulled tight into the pulley, it's not dragging out the banding because the banding is not getting hot. But the the setting the setting of these uh, the setting of these is fairly critical. But they are staying put. I've got all I've got here is a piece of steel uh, mole gripped onto the onto the square, so that that is uh, that's obviously out of here. This just seems to work very well. I'm beginning to wonder whether it's worth putting an extra brake on it. It seems to work really well. And it lifts the it lifts the belt out of the pulley almost. Almost. I think that could just do with being up a bit. Anyway, fine, this is fine tuning, right? So I will leave the break for now and next I'm going to concentrate on getting a lever. I think we can afford to go a little bit tight today. And what I might do is just weld a piece of steel on there like that. Which will also act as a wear surface. Well, I'm pleased with that. There you go. Finished with engines. Motor's running a lot quieter as well, as it's got bedded in. Right, folks, into the bowels of the beast. Can you see that gap there in the aluminium that I said would be useful for changing the speeds, sliding the motor backwards and forwards? Well, we've got a pivot across there. We'll have a bolt through here and a lever there that pushes that way. Lever actually will bend around here and will operate operate like that just to slide the motor backwards and forwards. This is a mock up. I'm going to mock it up and see if it's going to work. And then if it is, I shall finish making it. But it looks good to me.
that will be of course that will be like that on there would possibly possibly a bend in the end of it let me get it let me get it put together more and see if it's going to work I'll bring you back when I've done it and there we go folks it's only mocked up but I think you can see that if we just tack that in there that's going to shift the motor between high and low speed so what I'm thinking of doing now is to, is to cut that off here well away from these belts and have a straight bar there which lifts up and a, and a strip here with two slots in it so you can go from one to two just to lift it up and drop it into the other one and just push it across there we go it just slides right there. I think that will do the job. Let's see. Simple pimple. Keep it simple. Now it is folks. I've just tacked over it in for now. As you can see. Uh, shifting between the two belt positions very well. I shall finish the welds when I've taken it all to pieces and uh, I go over all the welds and just add to any that I've only just tacked. But that's fine. In fact, that's fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous. Thank you very much. Right folks, if I cut that off there, weld this bar on, but before I weld it on I shall turn the end down, put a thread in it to put a little screw on knob on it, and then where it's pivoted at the bolt here, I'll put a longer bolt in and put a strong spring on top of the uh, bar, and then I can lift it against the spring and drop it into a slot. And drop it into a slot for first, drop it into a slot for second. So there you go. And if that there's quite a lot of play, let me just see if I can find you that. There it is, look. As you can see, there's quite a lot of play on there, but what I think I might do is put a rubber bush on there just to stop it rattling and also to make sure that it stays fully in the first and fully in the second positions. Although the gate I'm gonna put a gate on here so that you lift it and it drops into a little slot on a gate so that will hold it in position we'll see it grows and grows and as it grows it improves onward right folks we're just uh, taking this down to fit the uh, it comes in at about 306 and that is
leaning in the way of the tongue again. Yeah. Three oh seven. Three oh six point five. Look at that. Super. Right. Nice. This is steel, is that? It's nice. Uh, I suppose it's a, it's a breeze. Breathe carbon, but it's uh, it cuts really nice. I'll just get a file and put a bevel on it. and die set up and I'll bring you back. And here it is folks. It's a scene you've seen thousands of times before but it bloody works. I am using a three to two most taper adapter just to start it so that it starts square. First, you don't succeed, give up. <coughs> now we're on. Now we're on. Right, that's it, we're started. That's all we need. And we shall move over to the vice. The thread on. Ah. There we go. Job, job. There it is, folks. One thread, one ball, just like that. Thank you very much. Right, well, it's that time again. It's beaten me today, although we've had a good day. We've used virtually every machine tool in the place and uh, we're cracking on so I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Morning folks, Tuesday and I found my bicycle in the tube hiding in plain sight where I thought it was. I just went back and looked again. It wasn't hard. And I've put two layers of it. I've put two layers of it. And can you see that? Difficult to see. I put two layers of it onto that uh, that brush down there, and it's just uh, perfected the whole thing. Right. So now I need a spring, longer bolt, a spring on there to hold this down, so that it's got some movement on it. I need to weld my handle onto there, make a gate on there, and two positions. And that's done. So let's crack on with it. But first, it's cup of tea time. Super. Right, folks. There's the shifter. And we can lift against the spring just to click us over the gate. Like that. Lovely. Now I've got my gate over here. And I've marked where the two slots want to be. And they want to be that diameter, probably half of it. And uh, I'm going to see if I can mill them in. Off 
we go. Set up and do the other one. Eyes down for number two. Right folks, that's the gate finished, just once welding on there, a uh, bit awkward to clamp it in position actually because of what's at the other side, but never mind, that's will manage. But, side project, I've noticed, I told you the other day on this Rapidor, that it's bump, bump, bump as it goes round, and I thought that it was the wear on the big end but it isn't. Can you hear that? It's in here and I think it might be a loose pulley. So I'm just going to whip this belt guard off and have a look. Whip this belt guard off. It could be difficult but it's definitely, it, you can feel it through there. Something's bumping. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. And there she is folks, naked and unashamed as they used to say. And there is a little bit, uh, I, the pulleys are fine, I can't find any looseness on the pulleys, I'm going to check the Allen screws but there doesn't seem to be any looseness. There is a bit of play in the crank but the main cause was this crank pin screw here was loose. 
and it was allowing the crank pin to wobble. So there is a bit of play in it, but for all the years it's been working, not surprising. So I'm just going to put it back together. It's now a lot quieter. That bump has completely gone. So there you go. Lovely. There she is folks, all back together and much quieter. Just a loose crank pin. It did sound to be in there, but that's not thumping anymore. It was thump, thump, thump. Right, and I just thought, oh, it could be a loose pulley. I could be knackering one of the shafts up, neither the motor or the main crank. But no, she's going great. Right. Lesser sides, back onto the main job. I've just been looking, I've just cleaned that oil up from around the back and I've just been looking and this is all down to the fact that it's got two drain holes, one there and one right in the back there, right? And that one in the back just drips past me drip tray. So what it wants is a long drip tray making to sit on those two pieces of bar there to go right in and catch it all. That's not beyond the dint of man to make one, is it? Future project. Right. Back on tuck lathe and on tuck gate. Let's give it welded on. And there we are, folks. The gate is on. Lovely. No play. Job done. You see how the spring allows it to just move up that bit to put it across the gate. Job, job. Right. Now, back on to the difficult how do we shift it bit. I have to get back onto that because it's the last bit left. And then it's just the, uh, the belt guards which I think I've already come up with a solution for but that's still in the back of my mind with everything else <laughs> right let's have a serious look at this and see if we can't rig something that'll do the job right folks here's a possible solution this is 12 this is 24 right so it doubles the speed if you like, or halves the movement. Right? If you look at that tooth I've marked there, when that goes round 90 degrees, this only moves 45 degrees. That's more reasonable. Now then, if I can make up a little tube to fix that gear onto the end of there and put the other gear pivoted into here the lever will be up here like that which as far as I can see is good if I'm standing here working I mean it can be brought right out can be brought right out to here so I think I'll work along those lines I won't put anything on this end at all Right, I'll put it on that end and we'll see how it goes. Right, let's have a go. Some of you, by the way, might recognise this. This is the drive mechanism of a honey separator. And I only saved it because of the gears, because the honey separator, unfortunately, was... Uh, was a galvanised one and all the uh, either galvanised which would be zinc or tinned which would be tin and uh, it had all gone rusty and fallen to pieces but I thought well the gears are worth saving because they're in really good condition and they work really well so there you go a honey separator right folks I've got the gear off it's pinned onto the shaft so all I need to do is to turn that shaft down to fit that gear and we're beginning to uh, see 
a rig. There's only one problem. I welded that bit of box section onto the end and I'm going to have to cut it off because I've got another piece of steel that's long enough that's that size and uh, I can't get it in anything to, t to turn that end down. So uh, off it comes. It's only a bit of box section. Never mind. There we are folks, just reducing the, uh, the shaft down to take the gear. The gear is half inch, or just under, barely under half inch. that the pump had been leaking badly so I never set it up. Mm. Let's just measure this gear again. This gear measures just under half an inch. Well, it actually measures, it actually measures half an inch. Yeah. It's, it's about bang on half an inch. 496 there. Yeah. On I eight, yeah. And that is five or three. That's just up in the room here. Time a bit off this. I'll put two fell on.
should be it. Because it must be beer, I love it. Must be beer. No, I don't want it. I don't want it to be too, I'm going to emery tape that. I don't want it to be too tight and risk splitting the gear and I don't want it to be too loose either but it pins onto the shaft so there you go. Job done. And there we go folks. It's been cogmapped. Good job. Still bumping a little bit, but uh, there's an interesting phenomenon. The saw is out of sync with what I see on the screen. How weird is that? Must be the electronic delay. Just shortening the bar down there, don't need all the bar. There we go. Right folks, this is what we've got so far. We have a couple of holes to mark and drill. We have the shaft sticking to there ready for the gear on and the pin in it. And uh, it's looking good. The only downside and I don't suppose it is a downside really, is the fact that once I've welded that end on, the only way to strip this mechanism down is not to pin out the gear. But uh, it's not really a downside, is it? Because the chances of me ever having to strip it down are very, very small. But I always like to make build things so they can be taken to pieces and put back together again. But there you go, that's just me. Right. Well. The time is upon us. It's 4.30, going on 5 o'clock. So I'm going to have a bit of a tidy up. And then I'm going to go home. So I'll see you all tomorrow. I'm very pleased with that. That works very well. That's fabulous. So, this is the last bit. The last bit. Once we've got this working, effectively... All that's left to do on here is a bracket for the starter, which might go there. No, it won't go there, will it? Might put the starter somewhere else. Could put the starter in there, couldn't I? Could put the starter there. Although that would probably be behind... Uh, yeah, I'll put it there. I'll put it there somehow. I'll put it somewhere. I'll put it somewhere. It probably would go there. I don't know. No, I don't like it there anymore. I don't like it there because it's it's in the way of the mechanism that's going to be there. So, where else can I put the starter? Put the starter there. That's a good place. The only thing left to do, as I was saying, the only thing left to do after I finish that mechanism, and that operates the uh, motor slider, is a belt guard. And I'm thinking of a belt guard that comes down over here, and also covers that front of that pulley as well, because there's no need to cover any of the further back bits, uh, as long as the, as long as it's covered up to there. Right, and I could incorporate that into this belt guard, which I will pivot off either off there or possibly off here, right, so that it lifts up like that. And I've already uh, contracted my daughter to paint Holbrook down it in gold letters, a la Myford, but Holbrook, and then big nine probably at the bottom. So, 
onward and tidy up. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Morning folks, Wednesday. And I've decided, seeing as the pin that I've got, I've got a hardened steel pin to go in there, but it's a bit loose in the, well it's not loose, but it's not tight, I wouldn't trust it to stay in. So what I'm going to do is drill a hole in the end and put an Allen screw in just to locate the pin. That way the pin can be, the Allen screw can be slackened off, the pin can be knocked out and it can be pulled to pieces again. I'm probably being a bit overzealous on stripping down here, but it's just the way I am. Never mind. Right folks, it's beginning to come together. But I need to cut down the piece of box section because it's too long at the moment. So I marked it up, searched for my goggles, couldn't find my goggles anywhere, so I had to tidy it up, and I found them. Right, off we go. Unfortunately, I haven't got enough length to use the wrapper go. So it's down to a cutting disc. And here we have it folks, I've put the old honey separator handle back on temporarily but that's out of gear and that's in gear. So it looks like we've got a worker there. So I can now mark up for all the holes and get it bolted up and then I have to come up with a handle, probably something up here. I don't know yet. But I'll get these holes marked up, get all these holes drilled now, and then I can fix the bloody thing on and take all these mole grips and G clamps off, which will make it a lot clearer. But I think that's a success. 90 degrees movement reduced to 45 degrees movement by a 12 and 24 tooth gear that I just happened to have in a junk box. 
There you go. I knew I kept it for something. So here we go, folks. All bolted up. I had to make some. I had to make some long quarter Whitworth bolts to do the job. Now it's a bit noisy. We've got some bouncy noise from the motor, some buzzy bouncy noises from the motor. But I think if I increase the spring pressure and pull the rubber stops tighter to the box section, that will stop. So if you pull that tighter, that stops. But there you go. I'm not going to pop a lever on there. Uh, this is the old bunny lever. I think we can call that a success. And I think there probably is room when I got this pin cut to length and drilled, there will be room to put the starter there. If I, put it, if I put it in there, it fits very nicely in there, but it's going to be behind the belt guard. I suppose we could put it, we could put it there. That's the place, I think. Now that we're not, uh, now that we're not putting a hand lever at this side. I've just had a thought. I've just had a I've just had a thought. No. I was thinking if I move that to that side and move the handle mechanism to this side, I could have the lever there. <laughs> Oh no, I'm tempted now. Never mind. I'll think about it. But now it's a cup of tea time. Right folks, started making a boss for the uh, handle. That's uh, Mark. Thank you. That's marked up for uh, drilling and tapping for that set screw in there. Uh, that's a half inch hole that I've smacked in that fits the... Uh, It's there perfectly. So next we have to drill a hole down there, tapping size for 5 16 width with, because that's what the screw is. Just just a little aside here. I've always used I've always used a chuck uh, to drill holes in the lathe, and I've never realised how much better holes drill when you have a direct most taper drill. Uh, this is the first time I've really done it on a, on a small size. I've realised that I have a set of, uh, of decent, small, most taper drills. And by God, they are sharp and they do drill well. So I shall be using, I shall be setting those up in the stand, probably on that shelf. You'll have to move. And uh, I shall be using them much more regularly. Right. That's cute, isn't it? Right, onward. Right, folks, there's part one of the boss done. Uh, that fits lovely, and uh, I think what I might do... Well, there's two ways. We can, we can mill into the end with a bullnose mill, if I've got one. Don't know if I've got a bull nose, and then put a round bar in. Or we can drill a hole in there and tap it. I have a feeling from the way this cut in the lathe, which was beautifully, I have a feeling this may be free cutting mild steel, 
which means it's got lead in it and it's not good for to weld to. So what we might end up with is a hole bored through there with a piece of bar straight through it with a locking screw in the end. I think that might be best. Nice little bit of work. Anyway, that's it for today folks. Time has caught up with me and uh, it's home time. But once again I think we've made good progress today. It's all working and uh, a lever here. A lever here. I might, when I strip all this down to paint it, I might just see if I can swap sides. See if I can move the square and the arm. Zooming back, the square and the arm over to this side and move the handle mechanism over to that side. All the, all the holes have been drilled together so the saddles should be in the same place on the tube and everything so the, the holes should swap over. You've got me thinking now because it would be a lot better if it was there, if it was actually here. We shall see. Anyway. What I was going to say was, I'm not here tomorrow because I have to have a visit to Castle Hill Hospital. And on the 20th of October, I shall be having a surgical procedure at said hospital, which will probably put me down for at least a week, probably a fortnight. So I won't be uh, making any of this type of video I don't think, but I'll have to see if I can think of something and maybe me and Izzy will do something uh, to keep you entertained. <laughs> right folks, I'll see you all on Friday. Bye now. Morning folks. Friday. And <laughs> I'm going to write another wrong or attempt to. I'm going to take this mechanism off completely and reverse it so that the gears and thus the handle is at this side and the square and this lever are at this side. I started building it like this because I was intending to put a lever on there not immediately realising that that means I have to have a full 90 degrees of movement from one position to the other which is too much. With that I only need 45 degrees movement. So what I'm going to do first is unbolt it from here and here and see if it will just flip over. right? Which will move that from the lower position to the upper position which is good. Or will it? I don't know. Spatial awareness, folks. If that goes over there, that will be in the upper position. Yes, of course it will. So, the only thing is, and this is this is a point of of construction accuracy. I know these holes are the same because they were bolted together. They were clamped together with mole grips and drilled as one. But I don't know the exact positioning of this tube is the same on each one. But we're about to find out. So let's do it. And that will put the operating lever here exactly where it wants to be. Let's do it. There it goes folks. It's on. Working in exactly the same way as it was the other way around. But this time I'll be able to get the handle here, probably up there and push down to turn it off, up to on. 
Yeah, that's enough to do it. Got a bolt those on yet. And uh, all I had to do was grind a bit off the back of those welds to make that fit properly. And that'll give me a handle. I can drill a hole through there. I can put a handle in there with a bolt. I can adjust the position of it. Perfect. I do have to take these off and weld them on the other side of the box section. But that's no big deal, is it? We can do that. Right, onward. Right, folks, well, I shot off and got carried away and forgot to film. There we are. Out of gear, in gear. Uh, I might bring that round here. I might bring that right round to there. I think that would be the best. That's out of gear. So that might come up a bit yet. And that's in gear. And I think if I, if I T-bar that round there. I think that'll do it. That probably is going to need a stop there. Oh dear. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And I think I can mount the starter now. I've got room to put the starter there. It gives me plenty of room to get to the speed shifter. Yep, that's what I'll do. Starter there. Excellent. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Right. Stop. I like it. And here we go for the starter mounting box, folks. Just tack it on and jobs are good. So we tack. Yep. And one there. Lovely juggling. Starter box fitted. Just put the tack on in there. Jobs are good. Wire it back up now. There we go, folks. Start her on. This needs to stop. Yeah. 
Smells like. I have left to do now is to work out the jockey pulley for the low speed for the uh, the small pulley. I've got the I've got the chain working. Just need to uh, work out a jockey pulley for it. So it's nearly time, folks. It's nearly time. Shall I do that? Shall I start it on Monday? I'll have a brief look at it now and see if anything comes to mind. Right folks, I've looked at this jockey pulley and it involves taking up a huge amount of belt. And I'm thinking along the lines of, why don't I just use a 2 inch shorter belt? Given that this is a 4 inch pulley, and this is a 2 inch pulley, if I used a 2 inch shorter belt, it would fit as perfectly as the high speed one fits and it's very easy to change, very quick to change it's just a matter of slipping it off and slipping it on again so I think that that's what I might do but that's for next week so thank you all for watching thank you for subscribing thanks to all the new subscribers and send me a like send me a comment if you haven't already subscribed, please do, because I'm still getting 60% of my, sub, uh, my viewers are not subscribed. So, if you view, please subscribe. It helps the channel. It helps me. And I'll see you all again next week. Bye now.